Ego Killer, who's a commenter on my YouTube channel, wanted to know specifically whether five compounds or supplements can actually increase DHT. You ain't been doing the education. You don't realize I'm super strange. You ain't got the answer. You ain't got the answer. Hey guys, Fitness Science here, coming at you with a video on beard growth. Now, there's a lot of conflicting information on the internet about how to grow your beard, but basically what we know are a few key things about beard growth. It seems to be mediated by DHT, which seems to be the key androgen that gives males the ability to grow a beard. And really interestingly, DHT is converted from testosterone by something called 5-alpha reductase, which is an enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. And then we have this DHT floating around that seems to upregulate the ability of hair follicles in our body hair and non-scalp hair, so our beard, to actually grow. And how do we know this? Well, male pseudohermaphrodite patients have no 5-alpha reductase in their body whatsoever, and they cannot ever grow a beard. But paradoxically, they actually never lose their hair either. So it's really weird. DHT seems to kill our hair in our scalp and yet be very helpful to grow our hair in our beard. That seems really weird to me, how such biologically close interrelationships here are actually actually so different when you look at how they interact on a cellular level. Really interesting how that occurs. However, Ego Killer, who's a commenter on my YouTube channel, wanted to know specifically whether five compounds or supplements can actually increase DHT because DHT, as we know now, seems to grow our beards. How do we increase DHT? A lot of conflicting information. Here are the five supplements that Ego Killer wanted to know about to help you guys out with growing your beard. They were creatine, sorghum, boron, macuna purians, and L-carnitine. These were the five that he wanted to know if there was any relationship that these guys could boost our DHT. So let's look at the research now. Creatine. There was one main study in 2009 on creatine and testosterone where college-aged male rugby players who supplemented with creatine at 25 grams a day for seven days and then five grams a day for another 14 days after that had an increase in DHT of 56%. That's huge. And this was compared to the participants who just took a glucose placebo and these guys had no significant change in their DHT levels. However, no significant increase in testosterone was noted in any of the 16 participants that actually took part in the study. And although DHT increased, the guys who were taking the creatine had pretty low levels of DHT compared to the placebo group anyway. So their increase in DHT was within normal limits regardless. But there was one major flaw in this study is that DHT can only be created by free testosterone. And guess what? Free testosterone was not measured in this study, unfortunately. So it would have been nice to see this included to see if the free testosterone also increased to a similar degree that could explain why DHT also increased in the guys taking creatine. And this is really only one study compared to the other 12 studies that have looked at creatine and testosterone and androgens. Two of the 12 finding some small increases in testosterone, but 10 of the 12 finding no real relationship between creatine and testosterone androgens, especially DHT being increased at all. So in conclusion, it might might be possible that DHT is increased with creatine supplementation, but I don't think one study is perfect evidence to actually prove this. However, I will say that creatine is so cheap and easy and accessible and has a lot of other benefits in terms of muscular endurance and muscular parameters that it may actually be worth taking it anyway. And if you do happen to get that residual effect of the DHT increase that may or may not be true for other people, well, why not try it anyway? Because it's so cheap. However, based on the studies and the overall body of research on creatine, and DHT, I have to put this into the category, it might boost DHT, but we're not entirely sure. Moving on to sorghum. What is sorghum anyway? You're probably thinking, what the hell's bloody sorghum? Sorghum is a grain used in Africa and it has been used for thousands of years, but it's really hard to find any studies on it, especially in regards to testosterone. Because if you're thinking about it as a scientist with heart disease and cancer, testing an African grain in relation to testosterone probably isn't your highest priority. So it is hard to find good quality research on sorghum and androgen. But in one study, they took fractions of sorghum and tested how well it inhibited 5-alpha reductase activity in prostate cell cancer lines. And numerous articles on the internet...
have taken this study completely out of context and said, oh, well, it proves that DHT is increased by 54% if you take sorghum. But that's actually not what the study says like at all. And this is the problem with blindly trusting random shit articles online that is just written to get you clickbaiting onto the article. It's not true. If you actually read the study and what it says, the percentage effect on 5-alpha reductase activity was negative 54.71%. And from the fractions of sorghum, it ranged anywhere from negative 30% to about negative 52%. Or in other words, compared to something like dutasteride or finasteride, which we know significantly inhibits 5-alpha reductase activity, sorghum actually does the complete opposite. Instead, sorghum stimulates 5-alpha reductase activity and stimulates the enzyme to actually be produced in a greater quantity. But that doesn't mean all the articles saying, oh, it boosts DHT by 54% is true. It doesn't. We don't know whether having 54% greater 5-alpha reductase enzyme activity would actually translate to an increase in DHT of the same magnitude, we don't know whether this is true. So the articles saying a 54% boost are not actually correct. Simply put, sorghum might just increase 5-alpha reductase activity, which could potentially or in theory lead to a higher conversion of testosterone to DHT. But then to prove how up and down these bloody studies are, we have a second study that induced benign prostatic hyperplasia in rats by administering them testosterone and then giving them sorghum in doses of 50 milligrams per kilo, 100 milligrams per kilo, and 150 milligrams per kilo, and seeing what happened. And what did they find? Well, they found a linear and dose-dependent decrease in prostate weight, as well as androgen receptor and 5-alpha reductase mRNA levels, meaning the structures like 5-alpha reductase, the actual enzyme, and the androgen receptor itself were not actually being created to the same degree. Or in other words, sorghum reduces levels of 5-alpha reductase completely and may, in theory, then reduce DHT. So we have one study saying it would increase DHT and now another study saying it would reduce DHT. So we literally have two studies saying the exact opposite things. So these conflicting results coupled with the pretty poor quality research around sorghum at the moment and just the lack of research in general, I have to put sorghum into the probably doesn't boost DHT category. The third supplement was boron and this study supplemented eight males with boron at 10 milligrams per day and it was like two mini studies in the one big study. One of the mini studies was just an acute administration of boron over a six hour window and seeing what happened each two hours in that six hours. And the second study or the second mini study was over a longer period of time where they said ingest 10 milligrams of boron daily for seven days and we're going to see what happens to you over the course of a week. And what did they find? Well, they found in the first mini acute administration study that SHBG decreased significantly and that over the entire week, free testosterone and DHT increased. So there's actually some promise with boron and this research, I think is pretty good quality and pretty strong to suggest that boron will fit into our show's promise at boosting DHT category. And where do you get it? Well, the major sources of boron are things like apples, avocados, beef bouillon, broccoli stalks, cherries, white bread, cornflakes, grapes, cinnamon, kiwis, lentils, nuts, olives, onions, oranges, parsley, peaches, soybeans, things like that. The fourth supplement is macuna burians. Very hard to say, but macuna is what I'm going to call it from now on. And it is a legume that is native to Africa and tropical Asia and has been shown in the literature at five grams per day to boost testosterone. In fact, five grams a day can boost testosterone from 389 nanograms per deciliter to 540 nanograms per deciliter. And this was in 75 males over 12 weeks. And it also increased their sperm count. If you're wondering what the actual biological reason and the cellular processes going on as to why this supplement may boost sex hormones, well, it contains some something called LDOPA, L-DOPA, which is a precursor amino acid to dopamine. And there is an established link between testosterone and L-DOPA because L-DOPA seems to upregulate GNRH neurons in the brain that actually upregulates the release of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, in turn creating more testosterone when these hormones reach the testicles. In fact, luteinizing hormone went from 4.02 to 5.98 after the three months of supplementation of five grams of macuna per day. But not only this, because macuna leads to an increase in dopamine levels and dopamine inhibits prolactin synthesis and because prolactin actually leads to a negative feedback loop in the whole HPG axis, by taking macuna, creating more dopamine, you're actually inhibiting prolactin synthesis and because prolactin is now removed, which is a negative feedback loop into the HPG axis, it's not getting that negative stimulus anymore and the whole HPG axis can create more testosterone because the negative feedback loop is removed now. And I think this evidence 
evidence is enough to put Makuna into the category of probably does boost DHT and contribute positively to hair growth. Wait, and contribute positively to beard growth. And the final supplement is L-carnitine. What is it? Well, it is a compound that is heavily involved in fat metabolism in the body. See, fats longer than 14 carbons in chain length cannot directly enter the mitochondrial matrix to be used and broken down as fuel for our body. So L-carnitine helps this process by transporting fatty acids that are longer than 14 carbon chains in length into the mitochondrial matrix to then be broken down and used to create ATP to fuel all our metabolic and energy needs. But does carnitine have any relationship to male sex hormones? Well, only a handful of studies have looked at this. Study one found that carnitine supplementation had no real impact on sex hormones in a group of 45 males with an average age of 66. And these guys were taking four grams a day of carnitine. Study two found that it may increase antioxidants in diabetic rats and actually reduce oxidative stress, which may potentially increase follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone at a dose of 200 milligrams per kilogram per day. But this seems to be clutching at straws as to just how well this will translate to humans. And there's no real direct mechanism. It's more an indirect mechanism of reducing oxidative stress and therefore having a greater increase in HPG axis. I mean, this would happen anyway when you take stresses away from humans. Their HPG axis is typically happier and healthier when you take away chronic stress. So there's no real direct mechanism, even though LH and FSH may improve, no real direct mechanism between carnitine and DHT in this study. And then study three found the complete opposite because in a three month study of two grams daily of L-carnitine in 58 infertile men, FSH and LH decrease while paradoxically testosterone increased. So this is in direct contrast to study two, which said the HPG axis may actually kick back to life when you take away chronic stress by L-carnitine injections. This one is now saying, well, yeah, it doesn't seem to be the case. However, this study seems to be of pretty poor quality, so we're not quite sure how well this actually fits into the whole picture. However, with the lack of research and the poor quality research overall, I think L-carnitine has to fit into the probably doesn't do much to boost DHT for beard growth category. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all the support and ego killer. I hope this answered your question about the five supplements that may or may not increase DHT. And I really, really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. See you in the next video.